Hey, uh, my name is Neil Brennan. I'm a comedian. I get a Netflix special, Blocks. And then Jimmy Carr said, why don't you have other people come on and talk about their Blocks, the things that make them feel isolated, alone in the world, like something's wrong with them. Now, my guest today is uh, one of the poobahs of mental prin health. Princessa? What I ref princessa. <laughs> one of the princesses. I know there is no female. This is probably a coincidence. I was going to say one of the godmothers. The Duchess. The Duchess of, <laughs> of Traumedy. <laughs> no, yeah, no, there are plenty of uh, people doing important work about mental, um, yeah, mental health. Uh, but yeah, no, I, lo I love to talk about it. Um, Maria it's Bamford's been a, it's been a cash cow. Quickly. It's been a cash cow. Oh, you've monetized this thing all the way into <laughs> fourth hand sweaters. <laughs> Full disclosure, check out the merch. <laughs> <laughs> you still sell old sweaters at your show? <laughs> no. Fuck, I wish you did. <laughs> that would be the greatest merch. That would be great. The, the, go to Salvation Army. Yeah. To get a bag, a box of shit. Box of shit. And bring it and put merch. Well, I do I do suggest that people make their own fucking merch because I'm sick of people asking about it. Uh -huh. Take a piece of masking tape, write comedy on it, slap it on a sock. <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> I don't have time for your... Small business ideas. <laughs> By the way, I sell merch. I have to lug a box yes. fucking through the airport. Yes. So that you can get a shirt and I can get $1,100 a year. And I love a piece of shit. I love stuff. I'll buy koozies, hats, pins, tees. I'll buy anything. But like to have to sell it. And the problem is because I talk about mental health, which uh, so then lots of people, as I'm doing the exchange of goods and services, They'll tell me about a suicide attempt. No one saw this coming. Or they'll have a, <laughs> they'll have a bracelet of just getting out of the the hoosca, the hospital, and they'll say, "Oh," and I'll have to say, "Can I run your card again?" <laughs> I'm so sorry about your father. Can I run that again? Do you have Venmo? Suicide's a tragedy, but uh, it has but, so but many. not but leave it out of the merch line. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, sometimes I tour with my friend Jackie Cation, and then she moves it along for me. She goes, uh-huh, moving along. You're, you're, you're cock blocking the sale. Somebody, okay. <laughs> this is interesting. <laughs> I was talking to a, a not a, a near, whatever, we're like trending toward friendship. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, he said like, oh, yeah, I, I was doing this, and then um on Monday, I thought I was going to kill myself. And I just laughed because I found it like, it's just a funny thing to say. Like I was, I had to do this thing, but I thought I was going to kill myself. So I wasn't. Yeah, no, it didn't. Like it was very matter of fact. Switch things around, decided. To yeah, it was going to have to move <laughs> some things. Um, and I laughed and my friend was like, that was good that you laughed. I asked a friend, of mine, I was like, was that weird that I laughed? And they were like, no, it's, it's more. It's like normalizing. I don't know how to feel. Like, as people who deal with stuff, I would, from the outside in, you deal with more stuff than I do. No, I think that's a judgment. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Um, <No. laughs> I, don't, I don't mean like, and best of luck with it. Um, uh, but I'm saying, no. like, why not be funny about it? Or why not be like... Oh, no, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'd rather talk about something than not, not you know, not talk about it. And especially then, yeah, if you've joked about it, then everybody can pitch in. Now, of course, comedians sometimes are totally unhelpful. Like you'll say, oh, I'm having a panic attack. Oh, what's that feel like, Bamford? Shut up. You know, like, I mean, like you don't tell certain yeah, comics, yeah, yeah. but yeah. certain other comics, you can tell them backstage and they would be completely uh, supportive. But And they go, I'll do your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do your time for you. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, Jackie Cation, my friend, like uh, I, when we were, I was I started doing the road and I, I, w I was not doing while well, I was bombing. So she would switch, uh, switch up with me and she'd headline and I'd middle. Uh, so I wouldn't ruin people's evenings in Erie, Pennsylvania. Mm. And uh, yeah, so like people who will be kind and pitch in for you rather than uh, say, why haven't you done it yet? Why haven't you killed yourself, Bedford? <laughs> Well, that why well, thank you, thank you. I was I was having a panic attack one, or I was like, I'm gonna have a panic attack if I go on. Mm. And a friend was just like, No, man, you gotta go. 
You got to go on. You got to go on. And it's, he wasn't, I don't consider it in uh, shitty. Yeah, yeah. It was just like, he was kind of like, no, I almost had a panic attack the other day. You and can I, do it. Yeah. Yeah, like, whatever. And yeah. he was basically right. It's just not very much fun to do stand-up comedy. When you're having a When you either are having one or are think you're going to have one. And even if you have one, I don't know how long. I was, I started taking beta blocks before I went on. Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. those too, yeah. Yeah, but what would happen for me is I'd go on and, you know, tight throat, walls closing in, can't think straight because you're like, think you're dying. Yes, yeah. And you can't breathe. Oh. They wouldn't last very long. They'd last 25 seconds maybe. Hmm. And and I could get through it and do the joke or whatever. And I would just like do a short joke. Up. But the joke wouldn't work very well. Right. Because they know something is out of Yeah, you're congruence. out of your body. You're not there. Um, but no one was ever like, were you having, they just, the joke wouldn't work. Right. Afterward, it was not, the whole set was not fun. Right. Because you're like doused in like this, whatever that was, you're still like, you know. Yeah, no, it's miserable. It is not, uh, it's it's not good to feel feel bad at work. I don't know if this is special to showbiz. I don't think it is. I think most jobs, as long as you look like you're doing the job, they want you to come to work. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Like even, yeah, if, if you're clearly, I mean, I, I'm sure you've worked with other comics who they're dying in front of you of an addiction. Like they are dying yeah. of an addiction and they go, and they're still touring and you're like, oh, so no one's gonna, I mean, and I mean, I didn't stop them either. You know, yeah. it's like there's a hot crowd waiting for them to perform. So it's- What not- do you think of that as an, as an adult, someone who's been an adult a while, seen people die of drug overdoses? Are you of the sort of, you can't change people- and you kind of, they're just going to run their course and. I mean, I do, I feel like I, the one thing, and this is, I only do it for myself. So I don't feel like I, uh, cause I appreciated when people reached out to me and say, Hey, Maria, uh, like, you know, I had an eating disorder. So at one point, you know, several points in my life, people have said, Hey, Maria, you're getting too thin. And I'm like, fuck you. I am Karen Carpenter. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> did you, well, it's funny. The, women I know have had eating disorders and like the pride you start taking. Oh, like, God, yeah, Nikki yeah. Glaser was saying she would get lightheaded and be like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> just, it, everything forms this perverse value system. Yeah, yeah, no. And yeah, you're just jealous. <laughs> and uh, yeah, all right, weirdo. But that's one of those things where I said something to Nikki one time and she got pissed at me. Yeah, of course she did. Yeah, and retrospectively, I'm just grateful that the person said it. Said Does it to get you. in? Yes. Like, uh, I think when I went was going manic, um, I had like a, a 2011, I had a number of breakdowns and I my friend said, hey, Maria, remember when you said I should tell you if you start talking too fast and having a whole lot of shit ideas? And I was like, yes. And she goes, we should go to the hospital now. <laughs> and I was, you know, I was, I was give me embarrassed. Some, give me a snapshot of a shitty idea. Uh, um, well, I had been really obsessed. I was working for Target as a uh, yeah, actor, yeah, yeah. and I, I just was so obsessed that it was evil and that it was wrong. And then so I was checking with everybody, uh, which is partially OCD. So I was like, I called the New York Times ethicist. I called this up. Uh, I drove up to this priest in Santa Barbara, who everyone said was great. I I got an interview with him to see like what he thought. Um, he said. <laughs> He said, I just bought, I bought these pants at Target. Huh. I guess it's not so good. Maybe I shouldn't buy them at Target. <laughs> Anyways. Were no you, one, no did Target ever answer. say like, hey, why oh, are you yeah, doing this? Yeah. yeah. No, th- I think I did not work for them. I, f- I think after the third year, they said, hey, we're, yeah, they were. Moving in, di- in on, a different direction. <laughs> are you, no, are we still doing our Manic Shark Tank uh, um, TV podcast? Yeah. What Are is we still the doing? manic shark? Well, it's Shark Tank, but it's all people having manic episodes. Oh my <laughs> god, I fucking love and it. And they pitch crazy ideas to the sharks and like you you guys are, no no don't answer. No, it's the the lower part of a mannequin. <laughs> but it's it's like it's like the second person in your home because, anyways, I don't I don't have time it's to not, explain it's, it. It's above you guys. It's above you guys. All right, I'll do, I'll, there's a different manic shark tank in Australia. I'll go right there. They already they want me, so I'll go. 
Um, oh my God, that's a wonderful. That'd be a great sketch. That is um, a freeway around the world. <laughs> Where do we start? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, I, so I've I, always so been grateful that people have said, but only retrospectively. At first, yes. I was offended and pissed. Yeah, and then you realize, like, mm. Mm, all right. So that's what I try to do. If I see someone who I go. Well, hey, I'm worried about you. I try to say, I'm I'm genuinely worried about you. Uh, even if you don't, yeah, even if it, you that person doesn't take it in or says fuck off, yeah, you know, just at least for my own sake, have said something, and that's just for guilt. So that if somebody dies or something, it's like, well, I said something because I've I've had, you know relatives die, yeah, uh, and so I just go and who I did didn't say anything because it was just like, oh, we won't. We can't, we can't possibly say anything. And it, uh, yeah, and then that person died without anybody, at least as far as I know, there was no intervention. And I watched, oh, I'm John Mulaney's yeah. special, which saw about it, like, yeah. that saved his life, you yeah. know? And intervention. Awesome. Well, that was, I was talking to somebody, uh, no, it wasn't even specifically about Mulaney, but it was just about inter- intervening, right? Yeah. And comedian, and, and I go, do you think it's worth saying something? He goes, you know, I've not said something for 30 years and it never got better. Right. It's one thing to say something. And if it doesn't like they, at least you, like you said, like I, tr- my side of the street's clean. Yeah. I tried. Yeah. Not even like you would think it's dirty, but, but, and also, I, but then I'm also of the mind of like, adults are going to be adults. <sighs> Yeah. Which is where you get into the al thing of like detachment. Yeah, detachment. Well, but I, I do think the whole thing of talking about things like, um, hey, do you really mean you're suicidal? You know, yeah. do you want to talk about this for a quick second? Or was that seriously just a joke? If it is just a joke, oh my God, hilarious. Yeah. But otherwise, you know, let's, uh, because I mean, I, I'm a talker about suicide. I have attempted lightly twice, you know, and I've, you know, not, they've been ridiculous. Dipped your toe in, yeah. As it were. Yeah. Whereas somebody um, else, uh, I have a good friend who has more impulsivity, who is male, who might, who might do it, you know, who does not talk. So if he mentions it, I'd go, hey, you know, I, I might like just, pay more attention that suicidality and depression, like I'm more of a depressive sad yeah. sack. I'm a sad yeah. sack. And he's more of a like, oh, I think I might get a gun, you know, <laughs> like real fast. Yeah. You know, the, 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 I think they are different. There's different a lot things. of good new gun laws permitting. <laughs> hey, Maria, I don't know if you've been following the gun laws, but there's some <laughs> dynamite new gun laws. I always wonder about intervention with sex addiction, you know, that, right. that we've had so many comics, uh, you know, Louis C.K., Chris D'Elia, yeah. where it's like people doing stuff where it's like, okay, that's clearly illegal. Can the comedy community community in any way, instead of just going, oh, that really sucks, yeah, help, you know, like, because there are definitely places you can go for help. And that stuff isn't even about sex. Like it's about power. Not, yeah. It's about- yeah. It's about impulse too. Yeah, it's about, about impulsivity. Like, it's a yeah. form of AD, or, uh, OCD or yeah, and, um, yeah. The the excitement of doing something super creepy or right. some yeah some trauma you had as a child or it was done to you or whatever. But I I do think that isolation of an individual is never helpful. I, I also think it's harder the more popular they are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, Mulaney, it's Mulaney's. Well, I'm not shocked that it worked, but talent level, money. John's got a lot of. John's a big star. Yeah, he, you know what I mean. Yeah. So, but like, he, he could have fuck. He could have fucked off. Yeah, yeah, that's true. No, no, no. That is no. So it's uh, but I, th- I think you just never know. You never know, and that's what the cool thing about intervention or people just giving it a shot. You know, saying hey. Um, would you want to get help or I couldn't help notice you masturbating in front of me. Whoa. Is there something yeah. you'd like to do about <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah. Well probably the best time to intervene. <laughs> well, and I, you know, and I, I it doesn't happen as much for female comics, but I'm also, you know, 
I'm not for it when women comics like do stuff in yeah, the yeah. audience where not. it's like sexually, you know, bugging somebody without asking them. Yeah. And but it, but you also see it's hard to fucking confront people. It, it is. It's oh, just yeah. hard to confront people. Again, success. But, it's just icky. But if you're can already, I, hey, can I involve myself in your emotional life? It's yeah. just like, I'd rather just be like, ah. Yeah. Guys, you know I talk about therapy more or less every episode. If you like this podcast, you probably have emotional needs that maybe aren't being met by yourself or others. And you got to call in the pros. Therapy helps. It helps. Whatever type of therapy it is, talk therapy, whatever, it all, none of it makes you worse. It's either a push or it's good. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills, how to set boundaries, a thing we talk about constantly, uh, and it empowers you to be the best version of yourself. And it isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. It doesn't have to be major trauma. Plus, nowadays, every trauma is major. Am I right? So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Neil today to get 10% off your first month. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash N-E-A-L for 10% off your first month. BetterHelp. You can be better and they can help. That's not their slogan, but it, it you know, they could certainly consider it. All right. So you've got, I mean, just what I've seen in your act, you have a bunch of your first one is depression. Yes. Uh, first of all, you have a book coming out. Yes. What's the book called? It's called Sure, I'll Join Your Cult. Great. Based on a true story? Based on, I love to be a part of any group. I don't even know, have to know what it's about. Um, and I will, I will gladly join in for at least a week. Do you? Till I go, wait, what's this is the Jehovah's selling, Witnesses. What are selling points? <laughs> Haircuts, outfits. <laughs> what makes it more free, believable? Free food. If they call me or come to my home, I'm I'm kind of interested. Did you pursue Scientology at any point? Uh, I did. I did. I took that test. Yep. And then I was like, this test is way too long. And then I, they had the show there. They had a show at the Celebrity Center. And mm -hmm. I went to go see somebody in a show. I can't remember how that came about. And yeah, at that point, I was already in 12-step cults, which Great. are free. And um, and they are. Do you consider twelve step groups cults oh, largely? Yeah, <laughs> totally. I mean, it's a bizarre set of beliefs that are kind of pseudo spiritual. Yeah. Also, very uh, you know paternalistic language, peer counseling, and people also people can be monstrous in these groups, like without any oversight. Do you ever see Doug Stanhope's bit about it? No. He but had a bit that I never bootlegged a bit before. I saw him do it and then I went back the next night and recorded it because I couldn't believe. Step one, admit uh, that you were powerless over alcohol. Right. Step two, get a yeah, higher yeah, power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, um, by your logic, vodka is my higher power. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, so I'm just going to go back to worshiping vodka. Yeah, yeah. Which is like, wow. <laughs> But I've also gotten a lot of benefits from 12-step groups. and No, no. I love them. Oh, yeah. my God. I can't get enough. I yeah. am totally on board. But you see, human beings need constant supervision. Yes. And yes. any group, any person in charge, any group, unless they're being, there's some checks and balances, it will just automatically run. We're set to run amok. It's going to get weird. It's going to be. Yeah, no, I have a, I have the current groups I affiliate with, and this is, again, this is a rule of cults, which you're not supposed to do. You're not supposed to say publicly which you're in, which I think is also, uh, I I know why. It's because of pride or something. You're not supposed I to thought it's because you become the spokesperson for it. Right, which I was just like, there's no fucking way. Like, there's millions of people in these groups, and 
we all know who's in them. Of El- course. Elton I mean, J, you know, like Brad P. Have you been to one of his meet? Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I've been in, uh, I've been Overeaters Anonymous, and then right. I've been in Debtors Anonymous for about 25 years. Um, and then I, uh, for briefly, about five years, I went to Sex and Love Acts Anonymous because I had a lot of compulsive one night stands in the late 90s. That's right. Um, freeway entrance ramp motels, red roof in, the door doesn't lock everybody in. Um, like it was wild like that? Uh, it was just lightly dangerous yeah. where I was like once a year I would go and, and this is like something that's an addictive thing where you go in your act when you talk about being single and then kind of feel out the room like. You know, that's, I think I definitely did that as a younger comic where I'd go, I'm single. Can you believe it? <laughs> and then you're at a nightclub. So then afterwards, right. some dude's going to hang around and go, right. can't believe you're single. <laughs> and then you're like, what? Me? Well, how did Me? you know? Yeah. <laughs> Who told you? Oh. Yeah. You're a so, wise one, huh? Yeah. So, and that, uh, I mean, again, this is all weird cult language, but it was helpful to me. They said that that can be a kind of like, it's intriguing where you're not really doing true intimacy. You're just setting out vibes. So saying I'm available, but you're not really available at all. You know, like, so at least that How did you get available? Well, so what, and this is what I chose for my I told my sponsor. I've been told I'm very available and not available. I've like literally gotten both notes. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I I did uh, get a dating plan where they said uh, anybody you go on a date with, you have to go on six dates with them and you have to be dating other people at the same time. I mean, if, if that's possible, but like you don't just zero in on one person and you that one, it's one date a week. So you've got to spread things out over time, so it isn't this. Uh, at least, like you used to. Yeah, with I, your legs. I jumped. Whoa, whoa Neil! You I used to do stand-up you, comedy. You weren't there. Um, <laughs> I always did it through the butt. Um, anyways, yeah. So then, yeah. No, I've slow, heard that stuff. Like it's down all. Up, it's yeah. you act. It seems like I mean, in Slaw, Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous, they kind of give you methods to yeah. work with yourself, and also seeing your part in it, like. I never really thought of myself as um, as a predator, but I was like, oh, shit. Like, meeting the people in the groups and that half of it's dudes, and the guys would cry talking about, you know, one-night stands they had. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know the, I didn't know you felt bad about it. Like, I was like, yeah. like that was really surprising to were me. You, do you think that the people that you were hooking up with were also addicts? I don't know, but I did have people who I think I really hurt their feelings where I was just like very cold, but believed that bullshit, you know, male, female, female stereotype of like, guys just, they just love it. And it's like, you know, <laughs> women, you know, women, once you have sex with them, man, you know, they just can't leave you alone. And I, you know, I was the opposite. I was right. just like, yeah, see ya, which is gross too. I mean, they're all, right. it's all gross, but, um, or it's great. If that's what you've agreed to, if you love polyamory and all that stuff, then that's awesome. But I think the thoughtfulness about it of having some, uh, self-reflection of like why yeah of like am I really being um available yeah the availability thing because it's really uncomfortable to me to actually have relationships even fr- you know friendships they're hard it's embarrassing and I have a hard time kind of negotiating or navigating them yeah and people, hard. If they people get their feelings hurt and I get my feelings hurt. yeah no totally. constantly yeah constantly it's all so that's what I really liked about it I then I eventually I think yeah I was dating for a while and I I did meet my husband but I was dating other people and um and he was the first person who was just like he knew I had mental illness and he was like, my dad, my, my mom had bipolar and, you know, she went to the hospital. He said to me, you know, I'll come in, I'll shave your beard if you grow a beard. (laughs) I was like, that is the most fucking romantic thing I've ever heard in my life. And, and then he really showed up like he was, and he's not in any way like a perfect person, you know, as I'm not either, but 
Did you guys fall in love quickly? Um, it wasn't like that for me anyways. I yeah. only, whenever I've fallen in love- And you've love, never asked him how it was for him because you don't care about it. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> I think he just thought he really liked me and he was just like, this could work. Yeah, when I fall in love, I fell in love in high school and I fell in love with, you know, some guy in Australia mm -hmm. once and I was just like, it was always fantasy type elements. So yeah. I didn't have that falling in love feeling, but I had- uh, the feeling of, I was like, are you down to do therapy? Are you down? And he was just like, yep. Yeah. You know, and so we've, we've gone to therapy ever since we were together, like three months, three months in was, you know, and it's not going to hurt if you can afford it or if you have access to it, or it's go, not going to make the relationship worse. Go to a weird 12 step group for couples, recovering couples anonymous or Don't know, I've never heard of it. Chapter nine. What's that? Chapter nine. It's about relationships. I think it's from the big book in Alcoholics Anonymous, but it's just, yeah, it's called chapter nine. It's just mostly in LA, but it's couples. That's been super helpful. It's free. It's been helpful. It's yeah. on Zoom. Yeah. And it's weird. It's super weird. Do how do, do people do couple shares? Yeah. No, it's really, it's really sweet. Like, because I didn't have a lot of married friends. I had my my parents who had been married 50 years. Or had all my girlfriends who were just like, you know what? Kick it to the curb. If it's at all right. toxic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, everybody's fucking toxic. All my yeah. friends are toxic. Yeah. You guys are as toxic as they come. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so the, the, it's really nice. You can reach out to other couples um, because both of us had a really hard time. Like the way I express anger usually is through suicidal ideation. Teary, sad sack. And go. Literally suicidal ideation. Mm -hmm. I go, if you're angry about what? Yep. You know, um, he, he Scott, uh, Scott's from Philadelphia. So uh -huh. Sometimes he speaks in a in a rough and tumble way that's sure. uh, direct. Yes. And uh, so somehow, hot house flower here goes. This means something. You know, like somehow I'm yeah. trapped. Tears, 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 and then like it'd be better off if I'm dead. You know, it's not immediately. Well, I or mean, like on the ride home. Well, it's a, it's a go-to thing that I did as a kid. Right. From the ages of like nine or 10, like that's always it's like my, adult running away. Yeah. From home. His running away is yelling and then uh, going on a long drive um, or a long, long walk. He likes a six hour walk. I consider suicide the longest drive. <laughs> <laughs> well, and he he can talk about his own experience yeah, because, yeah. but um, yeah. So we both came with our own yeah. nonsense, and do you still do that or no? Okay, no. I'm not sure it's if like, I. It sounds pretty effective. <laughs> <laughs> it's but it's just like I think in those twelve, it's like slips. Like we go okay, right, yeah. We, here's what we could do better, and the nice thing about these 12 step programs is like we can go to another couple as a you know and say you like stop the process whatever the dysfunctional right. process is just for a second like like let's say you want to have two shots of tequila well why don't you do some harm reduction and have like a milkshake and then a shot of tequila or you know slow down yeah. slow it down a little bit like so if yeah if i already started freaking out um, and, you know, going inside myself cr crying, like sometimes they say, uh, like change the subject, like just change the subject to something lighter. Go, go, go do some plans that you already had planned without going into this big drama. You know, I can't remember what that tool is called, but it's one of the tools of the yeah. 12 step program. And it's just like, oh my God, I, I, I just don't have those. No one's taught me that. We don't have any good habits. Yeah. <laughs> Naturally? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. I was talking to Atsuko was here and I was like, our factory settings are all bad. Yeah. They're all bad. We want them to be good. Like we, I would, I believe every human being would like to be angelic. Yes. And we're not like that. <laughs> yeah. That's not who we are naturally. So you have to like, no, ah. Right. Don't tell them you're going to kill yourself. Yeah. Like, just like the most basic shit. We have to like, no, look. Yeah. Yeah. Recenter like, ourselves constantly. Yeah. And I have to outreach to friends and go, okay, this is what I want to do. 
but I am just going to tell you what I want to do and then not do it. Right. Um, because that- I'm telling you because it's off. such a good idea. Yeah. You got to hear this plan. Awesome idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving into my car. Okay. <laughs> it's at CVS. <laughs> Um, I spoke to the manager. <laughs> he, he was yelling. We we had a connection. <laughs> He's super cool. <laughs> um, okay, so I do love a CVS parking lot. Who there. doesn't? So the, the things you've been diagnosed with, mm. you just did the medley. I mean, just based on the the cults that you've been in. Yeah. Depression. Yeah. OCD. Yes. Schizophrenia. No. Great. <laughs> not <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Um, I'm not night is young. not opposed. My friends, uh, yeah, I have a few friends with the with this. Have you read uh, the center cannot hold? No, who wrote it? Ellen Sachs. She's, no, she's out of L.A. She's a lawyer who has schizophrenia, and she runs a, a built a law center at UCL, USC um, to uh, advocate for mental health laws. Great. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful book. I don't know if you ever want to read about yeah, schizophrenia. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so the main ones are OCD and depression. Yeah, really, just dep- depression, and then there's the subheading. Would you say OCD? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Explain. You were. I don't know if you were the first person I ever heard talk about intrusive thoughts, mm. but it was heartening to me because yeah. I have thoughts where I'm like, I'm never gonna do that. Yes. Yeah. And I don't. And I feel bad that I had the thought. Right. And it's repetitive. <sighs> Yeah. And I think a lot of comics, I mean, that's a really beautiful thing about comedy um, in general is that people will say things that you thinking that nobody wants to say that they've been thinking. Um, But yeah, some things that are even more uh, like taboo um, where... Yeah, it's really shameful. Um, I'm trying to think. There's there's different kinds of OCD. Pedophile OCD, where people are afraid that they're a pedophile. Um, a lot of women who are postpartum depression, where one of the symptoms postpartum OCD is fear that you're going to harm your own child. Right. And so they don't want to touch their own baby. I mean, it's like really can destroy people. Yeah. They're so freaked out about this and really convinced that they're somehow a dangerous person. Well, it makes you feel like you're shitty in a deep, profound way. Yes. Yeah. And you have this impulse and it's like, well, why would you have the impulse if you weren't shitty? Yeah, or think of it again. Yeah. Or, um, yeah, and that's the OCD part where it's like most people, they would think some creepy thought, you know, whatever it is, and uh, they just go, oh, oh, Jesus, you know, like, right. <laughs> and, but I know when I started thinking my thoughts, First, as a kid, it was like whatever was taboo in society, that's what I zeroed in on. So I was afraid that I was like a, basically like a lesbian serial killer and that I was going to kill my family and chop up my my mom and my sister's breasts and then put them into chunks and bits and have sex with the chunks and bits, put the chunks and bits on a cob salad, toss it and feed it to the baby Jesus. I'm just spitballing. That's from the album. Anyways, but, whoa. <laughs> um, yeah, so I did never get that far into the anxiety about it. That was did actually- you, Lesbian serial killer, did you shave your eyebrows? I guess this is the question. No, is that part of it? I feel like Elaine Warren knows. She was, was she a lesbian? Or Scarlett, or what's her name? Shaved her. Yeah. Playing That's right. Monster. You could win an Oscar. Os- whatever. Anyhow. Any hoogs. Well. And so you must have thought, I'm, I, well, I'm a lesbian serial killer. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what's happening. So I got to stay up all night. And that my, my response to this to prevent it from happening was to sit on my hands and to shut my eyes all night to make sure that I didn't do such a thing, which is, ex- that's a great preventative measure if you are ever worried that you're associated. But not sleep. It sounds like sleep. <laughs> it's not sleep. Not sleep. <laughs> no, did not sleep. Um, and then I actually, part of developing the eating disorder was to kind of knock myself out uh, so I'd stop thinking these thoughts, like just feel like, oh my God, I'm going to have 17 bowls of ice cream so that I don't have to think about this stuff anymore. But You feel it, so sick that you're like, all right, well, this is just, this is my priority now. Yeah. That I don't know. Pa- yeah. I'll pass out or yeah. I'll, it keeps, it keeps you busy. Eating disorders keeps you off the pipe. Off well, the, the way you, <laughs> uh, it, 
the way you're like the way I developed my eating disorder, like it was a band. Right, right. You get an eating disorder. <laughs> what you do, you get yourself. I mean, I, I all I had to- was a bunch of pickles. I had a bunch of pickles. I poured some sugar in it. And my I process. Said, <laughs> thanks for asking. I got to get to pra- I got to get to band practice in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So, so you really had your hands. I mean, that's, it sounds like, how did you even get into, how did you become an adult with, do you go to college? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I mean, I was function. I was a very functional person. Like I'm a high, highly functional person with like, in terms of, you know, I was able to go to school and, you know, interacted and, uh, my, one of the things, well, speaking of cults, my dad, because I was so depressed, got me involved in Dale Carnegie training courses, which right. is how to win friends and influence yeah. people. And just call them by their first name repeatedly. It helped me to have a format to talk to people. And yeah. so, and that's continually changed my life is like when I've had like formats of how to live life. So I do love a cult. I love like 12 steps, like, oh, yeah. you do these things and then th- this will get better. Awesome. Yeah. You know, and like, talk about keeping your hands full. Yeah, exactly. This is in the 80s. Yeah, 80s. And it, there was not a huge yeah. infrastructure for people with intrusive thoughts, OCD, and yeah. depression. Yeah, so my parents sent me to a Christian counselor, which always is helpful. And uh, yeah, that was that didn't work at all, except that it showed me that they love me, you know, that they care about me. And so I went to this Christian counselor and I fell asleep with her for an hour every week. And then, yeah, I eventually called a suicide hotline from college and that gave me the number for a 12-step group. And and that really helped me because it was just full cult. You know, it's just like, you're in, you, know, you have a higher power. Oh my God, sure. Okay, what, what, what do I do? And um, I'm an atheist in general, but um, for th- I was so desperate. I was just like, sure, God, sure. I'll believe yeah. in God. Is, yeah. is that what works for everybody? <laughs> like, yeah. What's his name? Yeah. Oh, yeah Jesus. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Great. Soup stoops. Love what, <laughs> love what I'm hearing about him. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. Um, yeah. That's, well, they they say, you know, there's an atheist version of 12 steps. Wink. No, that, there's not. That is good. Yeah. I, I've been. It's a. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's also just like not. It's not just dancing it's like, around it. It's just yeah, like exactly. okay, yeah. Why do we have to have a separate thing? I, I go. The to group the- becomes to the higher again. I would also like to say mm. because the point of the show is to like talk about the stuff and how you got better. Twelve mm. step groups are fucking helpful. Yes, yes, totally. Be- like because yeah. the way you're you're analytical and smart, so you're gonna like reduce it but well I just do want to like lower like lower the bar like right. in terms of like it's what if it's what if it's shitty you know but it's better than what you've been getting you know like I, I've i never every time I go to 12 step meeting I go I, I've i never left and been like fucking that was a bad one was one bunch of dicks yeah um, it was like alright that was at, at, at worst it's you're the same but yeah. you're never worse. You're never, yeah. I, uh, I've i had a couple Have you? where. <laughs> well, I, but then I think you feel like you're talking about the destructive people who, the monsters who can make these, like, it's not the program's fault. It's more just like yeah, it's just the people, people says yeah. something shitty or. Yeah, personalities and yeah. all that stuff. But, um, and also genuine, like, Debtors Anonymous is problematic. It exists mostly in. Paris, New York, and Los Angeles. Those are the, the most some of the most expensive cities in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, it's I also put that together. A Western <laughs> concept where people are living in capital societies. Yeah. So like, okay, like I, I was on a, a meeting in Johannesburg, and it was like, we've been really having a problem with Vegas coming to the meeting, and I'm like, yep, yeah, that's a real issue, like. What That's is this? a real debtor. What? Yeah. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. Like, are are we? Yeah. This this is supposed to help people, and I don't know. Yeah. So it's a questionable thing. Like, I just go. Give me some. How did you end up in Debtors Anonymous? I just didn't know how to have a job. I just didn't know. I worked in food service. I wasn't very good at it. I moved to L.A. I still wasn't good at it. Uh, I started. You thought you were going to turn it around when you came out here. I don't know what I thought. I just thought. Find your voice as a food service person. 
I I don't know. It, it was not a well thought out plan. Uh, yeah, just stole. Was just falling into a hole. Like I got five thousand dollars in medical debt. I uh, was living in a cockroach infested apartment. The landlord accepted sex for rent, according to my my. Uh, uh, yeah, neighbors. And I was like, what? I did not have the money for rent. So I was just like, hey, you're like, I'm not a sex addict yet. I'm so not a otherwise, sex addict yet. otherwise I would. He's cute enough. <laughs> um, he has that sparkle. Um, is he, uh, is he legally separated? That's what I'm into. No. So, uh, yeah, my OA sponsor said, want to share this DA? And it was just basic social services of two people. I mean, it was self-motivated. I had asked two people, it's called a pressure relief group in DA where you, uh, who sat down with me and my situation and said, gave me a bunch of suggestions that I could or didn't have to follow through on, but some of which were like, call everyone you know, find a safe place to be, find a safe place you can, you know, move to now. Like, I found a couch that I could live on for a month, you know, that was safer than where I was. Yeah. Then what are all your skills? You have a BA and you can type 60 words a minute. Sign up for six temp agencies, you know, like yeah. ideas that I just didn't think of. And then also didn't have the support around. So now I had this whole group of people saying, um, yeah, call us. If you're scared to go to work, well, I'll, I'll be there with you, you know, like, cause I was scared to not know how to do something. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I worked as a secretary for about 10 years while still doing stand-up. And yeah, it was just about learning how to take care of myself as yeah. an adult. And I just didn't know how to do that and uh, before, and which is embarrassing. Uh, and it's definitely a, a privileged problem. Um, but I'm grateful that 12-step programs were there because it was like, yeah, it wasn't in a ton of, it wasn't really so much debt as much as it was I... I didn't, yeah. I think those groups are there for whatever you need them for. Use them for whatever yeah. you need. And like, take what you want and leave the rest. Yeah, like yeah. the Like, the, take the good parts, take the helpful parts, and the rest just be like, oh, I don't fuck with that part. That That's nonsense. <laughs> yeah, like- To some, me. Yes, yeah, some people say, oh, you gotta, you gotta go all in. I'm like, no, sit poolside. <laughs> just go to like a meeting once every six months. You're gonna be better off- just knowing that other people are out there and you're not by yourself, you'll feel better. Yeah, the simple, uh, you're not the only one. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, that's so, that's 80% comfort right there. You're like yeah. 80% better. Like, okay, so I'm not isolated. I'm not a loser. I'm not an yeah. ostracized. But every call or any group, once you get into something, they're like, you know, you go to you join your gym. This is the greatest gym. <laughs> this is the best gym, isn't it? You know who I love at this gym? Um, Sarah. And then I also love Jesse. I love Sarah because she's at 6 a.m. You know, like everyone yeah. has to tell you exactly what you need to do in order to have the best experience. Yeah. And it's like, that's just not true. You know, just go enjoy it for what it is and or, you know, or not. I always want to say when people go, I have a, I have a, a woman I want you to date <laughs> or whatever. I want to set you up. I want to go, all right, what, what kind of movies do you think I like? Like, just let, what do you know? What do you think you know about me? Yeah. And then, but people just assume that their way is the way. Oh yeah. And it's just not. Yeah. It's yeah. a way. It feels like the way. Cause you're a singular person. Yeah. No. It, well, and it, yeah, it's very comforting to think. Yeah. No, I, I, uh, yeah, I have plenty of, I feel embarrassed how many times I've told somebody <laughs> I remember I told somebody in DA, she was like worried about making rent or whatever. And I was like, oh, we'll just, you know, sign up at a temp agency. And she's like, no, I think I'm an actor and I'm going to do okay. And I'm like, okay. She's a huge actor. Like she's yeah. super famous. She owns buildings. I'm like, I'm sorry. I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I, I made have a bit of a mis miscalculation. Right, but like, <laughs> what are the odds she was good at acting? Yeah, <laughs> do you know what I mean? What are the odds she'd be? No one's fucking. <laughs> well, you were right. What are the odds that she? What, what is she? One of the biggest stars in the country? Like what? Fucking <laughs> nobody's that. You played the. You you were right to play the numbers. Well. I don't um, know. Do, I, I would say do that again and again and again. <laughs> um, I'm getting more lists. Guys, buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful, right? It shouldn't be, but yeah, a lot of times it is. Unless you go to game time, it's the fastest, easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. 
With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hype for the fun you'll have. You're going to have fun. Concerts are fun. All right, let's run through it. Drake, 21 Savage. The reason I like 21 Savage, I've been clear about this, is because where every other rapper will come up with elaborate insults about how you what you do and you suck this and da 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 And 21 Savage has just boiled it down to pussy, which I think says more than you could ever, ever want from all of the, your mother did this and the, he just goes pussy. And of course, Drake, it's the guy that our sister's dating that we don't want to like, but we just like him. Let's go through a, the, uh, some other uh, people that are coming. Bandmade, apparently. They're playing at the House of Blues. It's a bad name and they look like K-pop ladies. No offense. I just think it's, I don't like puns. Like, remember that group Flowetry? Didn't like the name. It's don't I don't need a pun. Love the band. Don't put a pun in your name. Uh, and then Young the Giant is playing the Santa Barbara Bowl coming up. Good for them. It's a big, that's a big room. And uh, I think I like one of their songs and I can't remember what it is. That's kind of how it is now, right? Carol G. This is one of these people I'm barely familiar with. She's doing the Rose Bowl. So basically, I'm as good as dead culturally. Game Time has uh, flash deals and last minute tickets. Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Images of seat views so you can see what it's going to look like from the seat. And lowest price guarantee, event cancellation, and job loss protection. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code BLOCKS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code BLOCKS, B L O C K S, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. Hi. That's how a spokesman says hi. Hi. You don't really pronounce the H. You just go, hi. After years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month, I thought, what's the catch? Do I have to give Ryan Reynolds a, a handy? No, I don't. I mean, I didn't have to. I did. But after talking to them and using their service, it all made sense. There isn't a catch. Mint Mobile's secret sauce, but enough about the handy, is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. So there's no like store that you go to. They, they cut out the cost of retail stores and pass the sweet savings directly to you. Basically, the way these things work, the companies like Mint Mobile, they use the extra signal leftover from like the big wireless carriers. So there's like extra bandwidth. It's just stuff that is not interesting or relevant. Although it's because of the service, they can charge you 15 bucks a month. So ta-da, it's relevant. And I use it and it's great. It's no better or worse than any other service I've ever had. It's like, I don't even think about it. Except when I'm doing an ad. For anyone who hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. If you remember nothing else from this ad, remember handy, remember 15 bucks a month. And I think that's all you need to remember. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds, of course, who can, but you, you're already remembering. You're never not remembering him. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to Mint Mobile dot com slash n e a l that's m i n t m o b i l e dot c o m slash n e a l mintmobile dot com slash neil cut your wireless bill to fifteen bucks a month at mintmobile dot com nihilism yes nihilism nihilism that's the name of your next album nihilism um, <laughs> um uh yeah like the point of anything and um you know i'm old uh, uh crone uh white lady I, you, nobody needs to hear what i have to say you know what i'm saying like i i, I definitely need to cede the mic unfortunately it's right in front of me to a, to all sorts of new generational voices that are so much more interesting and also 
like uh, need to be heard, you know? So uh, that that's sometimes I go, oh, why am I still talking? Do you think that's nihilism? Yes. I think in terms of like the meaning of, yeah, yeah, just, what, do, what you do you feel think like is? I mean nihilism is, that, is just you, reducing things to meaninglessness to me that's my what I believe uh, the definition is okay I uh, may not be smart enough to know what nihilism is but I'm I mean but that's that's a new I think deep. I'm gonna look it up no let's do it because the why why have a podcast if you can't make people wait <laughs> for word definitions total rejection of established laws and institutions <sighs> Anarchy, terrorism, or other revolutionary activity. Total and absolute destructiveness, especially toward the world at large and including oneself. In philosophy, it's an extreme form of skepticism, the denial of all real existence or the possibility of an objective basis for truth. Well, let's just say I did not know what the definition <laughs> of it was. Man, I thought it was about personal meaning, but it's about uh, meaning for everyone. But even the... The thing that you were describing of like feeling like you should step aside or something. Yeah. That feels like shame or guilt or something. Shame. Uh, or uh, or, gu- is, or like guilt or what is I that? guess the word's guilt. Well, or. It's utopian in that I don't know. You're fucking great. Right. <laughs> like you're how many people do you think are. Li- yeah, there's. 40 U's. Yeah. Yes. yes. There aren't. <laughs> there are. Have you there been to not. Oklahoma City lately? Uh, <laughs> no, but I'm saying like it, it didn't happen yeah, yeah. overnight. And I also don't think you're preventing anyone from being. There's like, tick, let them go on ticket. Let them go. Let, hey, no. let them go to Largo. Let them be on ticket. Like there's okay. places they can, if they're great, they will, Every, they yeah, will no. bump, they will bump, bump you. you. <laughs> no, oh, I know. I like know. they will replace you. Yes, yes. They, no, you don't have to like help them. Yeah. Help, no. Not like don't, don't fight them, but I'm saying you're excellent at what you do. Well, and I guess what I'm saying, like, I guess the nihilistic part is like, um, what is the point of anything that like the things that you've been sold or I, I feel like I took as truth um, as like what success is, what will bring you happiness, that those things I think uh, have proved themselves to be sort of empty. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And that, or that it's harming other people, that it's actually like, I don't know if you've had this uh, uh, with the widening gap between people's uh, salaries. Like I've had so many friends my age who've had to move out of Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. So I'm now isolated from my peers. You right. know, just like going, Your oh, plan worked. This plan, yeah, yeah, exactly. The plan, the amassing money yeah. plan. Yeah. You nailed it. Yeah. Girl. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, now everybody has to move to Arizona. Yeah. Yeah, so the the dream isn't... Um, well, we're just sold values that are garbage. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, cause it's money in it for greedy... It, yeah. But I... I, I uh, yeah. I don't know how to find it's I like don't know I, I, I give it. money. It's like I no, no. Yeah. give money to people personally. I give money to charities. Yeah. I give I don't think I shouldn't get the my portion of the door at a comedy show. Yeah. That's Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I hear that. I mean, girl. So <laughs> so like what you're not taking that a percentage didn't, of my merch. What is this? No. Vegas? <laughs> right. But that's what I'm saying. Like <laughs> what that I don't know if that made people move out. No, you no, no. Door, I know exactly what you mean. It's yeah. just once you get into how to dismantle it. Yeah. It's like, I don't, I can't, I don't think I can. Yeah. But I also know it's, I was saying to somebody yesterday, like the ending of Chinatown, the movie Chinatown. Yes. Okay. I haven't seen it in a long time. It's a incredibly evil person gets away with an incredible evil, incredibly evil thing. Okay. And Jack Nicholson is like, like fuming. Okay. And the guy goes like, forget it, Jake, it's Chinatown. (laughs) Like, and it's like that ethos where you see like, oh, wait a minute. I mean, the reason church is popular and the Bible's popular is because it's science fiction. Right. It's, It's science fiction based on the idea that Good values will be rewarded. Yeah, which clearly, I mean, Joel Olstein's presence and uh, my, his net worth shows that uh-huh. it's, and greatness. And, Let's be and fair. Greatness. And greatness. Well, he's an excellent speaker. He's coming with a spouse. He's coming with abundance for your family. 
Yeah. So I, and maybe that, I think that definitely is ego or uh, saying, oh, I'm going to fix anything. Um, I don't think it's ego. I think it's a human yearning. I think yeah, you're yeah. right to. Yeah. Just feeling like, oh, fuck. Like, yeah. Like these, everybody deserves to, like my, I have, friend, I have a friend who lives right next to the freeway share, a sharing house and um, has uh, people, unhoused people living out in front. So there's a ton of meth and people uh, selling drugs and stuff. It just sounds like, oh my God, that fucking sucks, man. Yeah. And so we've had, we've had comics come live with us <laughs> for a while, you know, cause we have, we have a guest bedroom and, um, uh, and then that was, that was stressful yeah. in a fresh, fresh way, which, which maybe yeah. we could have handled, but we, we did not, we, we did it for a year and a half and then we're like, oh, I can't, I that's can't a do long it. time. Can't do I it. commend you for that. But, but it's, that's the thing. It's like homeless people have moved in front of your friend's place. It's bad for the homeless people. Yeah. No, it's bad for it. Yeah. And it's bad for your friend. Like the homeless people aren't like, this is, I made it. Yeah. Right. This is the shit. Finally, I'm in front of that dude's house. Yeah. Oh God. Like we talked, like I dreamt of <laughs> and your friend, it's dangerous for your friend because homeless people are I on drugs friends, and, yeah. and a lot of times mentally ill, like a lot of times mentally ill. So there, and then you go, let me try something. You're stressed out. I had a friend let a homeless person come live with her. Oh, really? How did that work out? It didn't work out good. Oh, shit. Like it, you know, because yeah. mentally ill and, the, it's, yeah. and well, yeah. or like a stranger or like the remedies for these things are incredibly complicated and difficult and, and more or less impossible to pull off individually, I think. Well, and I read about, did you read about that, um, that little town in Belgium that takes in, it's has a tradition over the past five or thousand years, whatever, to take in people who have, um, who are mentally retarded or mentally ill? No. Uh, yeah, it's a little town in Belgium that's done it for many, many years and uh, they still do it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And I was like, gosh, I mean, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Scott, uh, Scott and I, we're, we're both bipolar, so it might be a little weird to get, but if we got somebody we Are you bipolar? Yeah. Yeah. Bipolar too. You know, uh, it's the gladiator sandal version of, it's a sexy one. It's a sexy. Goes up to the. Yeah. (laughs) Up to the. the It's a pretty cool bipolar. Um. And how is that? Pretty good, I, you know. I, I mean, I'm here. Yeah, no, listen. Uh, but Take Taylor it. Tomlinson was here. She has it. Oh, yeah, and yes. I didn't know until she said it on her special. I was very nervous to tell friends of mine I was bipolar because I thought they would think of me differently. And then I told all my friends, and nobody did. And it was actually pretty insulting. Where I was like, oh, shit, okay. Is it hypomanic? Hypomanic, yeah, yeah. So it's not like full on. No, yeah, I haven't had any psychotic episodes. Um, Yeah, so... And I don't know. I mean, I have friends who are uh, bipolar one and, you know, it's just a different experience. But uh, do you think it's helpful to be with somebody that is also bipolar too? Um, I think that's definitely a reason that we connected so hard because I was just like the fact that he is, is moody, you know, like we both have. And I'm just like, are you really mad right now? And I'm like, I'm really mad too. Like he would, one of the best jokes he would do as I would be like, God, I'm feeling depressed. He's like, I'm depressed too. <laughs> <laughs> and then he pretended to be depressed. And I was like, and then it turned out we've been together like 10 years. So it turns out he is, he is depressed. <laughs> I was he's like, real. he, wasn't he was yeah. genuinely depressed. Uh, so he's, he's on meds now, but um, yeah, like that was interesting for him, I think, because he's a painter and uh, part of with getting together, it was like, we both kind of got more stability, you know, living together. And then also, you know, my, my income's so good. Like I don't, we don't really need, you know, a giant, he doesn't need to be bringing in, he, he used to work a lot of construction sites. He just doesn't, he can paint full time now, you right. know, and do sells paintings and uh, Scott Marvel, Scott Marvel And um, I think realizing, oh, I, I'm married. I have this person I love. We own a home. Everything's st- and I still feel ter- terrible. You know, like I think that that was when he realized he needed some meds. Yeah, like, uh, which that happened to me. But again, that's what's funny is like it's a different version of like the American capitalist dream, right? Right. It, but it's you get money and car, whatever, and then you're like, okay, yeah. not any better. And then he went, he did it the right way. 
Yeah. And yeah. was still like, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I, and I don't know if this is this way in other industries, but definitely show business, like once you make it, they just go, oh, you did all that. You can work 16 hours a day. Well, let's have some more. Do you want some, do some more stuff? Yeah. Like they just want to add yeah. more and more stuff. And let's, do you want to sell a perfume? You're the only person <laughs> who I ever heard. You said it to me one time, like years ago, where you were doing the sitcom, you had a show. It's the Maria Bamford show. And you were like, I was exhausted. I can't work. Oh. I can only work eight hours a day. No. Yeah. Yeah. I, ca I can't do that. Uh, I did it for two. I did it for two seasons, which were very short seasons. And uh, it was, I don't remember most of it. I mean, it was, yeah. it, and it was the best possible scenario. Like it was about, the whole show was about mental illness. Everyone was like, Maria, do you need to lie down? I had a tent on set. So <laughs> between takes, I could just go on and lay, lay down and, and I just, it was beyond my abilities. I'm amazed that it happened. And you had good writers, too. You had Pam oh Brady God, and you had so great. The, so great. the rest of Development guy whose name is escaping me. Yeah, but. Um, Mitch Hurwitz. Yeah. And I just felt so, I felt so terrible in terms of, you know, you really want to bring your A game. And I was just like, I needed to sleep like 12 hours a night, which is not good with making television or movies. They do not want that. Sleep is the worst thing you can do. It is. It really is. <laughs> yeah. Um, which I I totally understand the cost of uh, renting equipment and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, I was very lucky to have that experience. And uh, But I don't think, yeah, I wouldn't do it again for sure. Or, yeah. But I love how everyone always, yeah, people are like, let's do French hours. We're only going to shoot, you know, from 3 to 5 p.m. And then it never, yeah, it like never turns. Not, yeah. yeah, no. Yeah, it gets German hours very quickly. <laughs> and you know what German era I'm talking about. Oh, I should My do. listeners do. My good ones. My, the behind the paywall, Berlin? those guys. Berlin? <laughs> yeah. In the 30s. Number three block. Although we probably got eight by now. Okay. Um, my phone. My phone. Oh, God, yes. Well, it just went off a couple times. Have you put parameters around your phone? <laughs> no. No. You should. Okay. What do you do? It took Instagram off. Oh. Took it off. Smart. I do have someone do my social media. I mean, that's huge. She likes, yeah. So she, I, I like, I told her to like everything. And if somebody says a hateful thing, um, also like, like it. it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Why, why risk it? Well, and you know, uh, hate speech is also a craft. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, oh, fuck, that's funny. Um, a buddy of mine, Kevin Christie, has an observation that evil people have the best flags. <laughs> like the swastika <laughs> with the red and the black. Mm. Like, like a spider. You want to talk about fucking logo spider. with a scent? I mean, fucking strong. And then uh, <laughs> ISIS. <laughs> had a killer flag. Oh, I don't even remember ISIS's flag. Oh, I'll never forget it. <laughs> All right. So you just can't put your phone down. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love it. And, you know, it's great because it is what I love about it is being on the road as a comedian. Like there's none of that. You, I don't have to be lonely if I yeah. don't choose to be. So that is wonderful. Then it's just up to me to pick up the phone and call people. Um, but uh, it's when I start staring at Instagram and going, I, I would like to make well choreographed videos of me dancing. <laughs> Wait, how does, I don't know how to dance. Like <laughs> yeah. you start having all these longings for stuff. That, for stuff that you didn't, you've never valued in your life. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's your entire, you want to, Dedicate it all. Yeah, why can't I get a raccoon in my own home? Yeah, um, I I want to be a <laughs> rise and grind finance bro. Did you see the new thing with Ma Matthew McConaughey and how he's doing sort of a life coaching thing? I read about, I read the review of it. That was so strange. I don't know how I feel about Matt. Like he, I like him as a performer, but as like his appeal as like a, he's getting like getting gravitas. Hmm. And like, he's like an elder statesman. Yeah. It's like, he's going into like Roy Rogers territory, which, okay. 
I mean, God bless. But it, but charging people for a seminar is charging a bit like- Charging people, that feels like, no, man. You I know. Well, that's that. where you, to your point of earlier, it's like, how much fucking money do you need? I never oh. know when when I look at people doing stuff, I'm like, how much money do you need? Uh, yeah. And I, I, if you ever need to go to one of my shows, and I know a lot of people don't, uh, and you don't have money, uh, just e- email me. Uh, you get it off my website, ariamayamphorbay at gmail.com, and I will get you in free um, in blocks of two because uh, I don't always believe people when they say, I have so many friends who want to come see you. No, you don't. Very quickly, not a block. Yes. You've chosen odd places to do, to film specials. Yes. Why? Sloth. Is that what it is? Yeah. One in my house was just, I didn't, I didn't have the energy. I just didn't want to go anywhere. And, and my parents loved me. And I was just like, I'm going to do it in front of those guys. Great. They've got skin in the game. They're- sure. Literally. <laughs> and um, Five feet, yeah. six of it. <laughs> and then. Uh, it sounded creepy when I was like, <laughs> she's five foot six of skin. <laughs> skin. If you're just joining us, we're talking to a lesbian serial killer. Yeah. Epidermis. <laughs> um, uh yeah, and then I did one where bowling alley. Bowling alley. Oh, that one was the premise was I just always think it's so funny when somebody sees you at a small event and they go, like I had a friend who saw me at an open mic and they were like, Good for you. I mean, it just seems like you're really you're doing it and that's good. And then I did a bigger show and she was like, You're pretty good. You could you could keep you could keep doing this. And then in, like she saw me on a TV special and she was like, Maria, you have a gift. Like it's all about the condition yeah. and the condition. Yeah. And so that's what I did is like set it in my, like on a park bench, in a bowling alley, and then in a big venue. I don't think it, I don't know if that's what it read uh, as a special, if people knew that's what I was trying to say, but it, it was, I thought it was. Did you explain it? I didn't. <laughs> 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 oh my god what a fucking maniac um i sure didn't and i don't think they got it and i could have put a graphic well, up for three seconds I, but why do i that? hate explaining jokes i don't want to explain it, it helps <sighs> not joke structure yeah I should have thrown a graphic up. Oh, well, too late. Old baby. <laughs> Still out on Netflix. Sure is. You can now watch you know it what it's about. <laughs> now that you know what it's about. And maybe it'll be fun this time. Um, narcissism. <laughs> Number four, narcissism. Yes. Uh, I would. Like- I like it so far. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I like your... I mean, again, what, is there anything better in small doses than narcissism? Uh, I love... I love that about Los a Angeles. narcissist in full flight. Yes, I love like a confidence. bald eagle. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> yeah, I just it doesn't it doesn't look good as you get older. Uh, I realize, like I I just I mean, my my dad was a very thoughtful person, but he was also very needy as he got older. Like kind of like uh, like yeah, my mom when she was dying, she said, "Honey." <laughs> Keep smiling. You just smiles have interest in people. See how they're doing. Smiles, smiles. <laughs> like <laughs> that. You don't want to be a pain in the ass as you get older, and so that's my attempt. How are you doing? How are you doing, Neil? With narcissism, or is this, <laughs> or just in general? Or do you just fall into a, a Carnegie hole? No. <laughs> Oh, wait, what does that mean? A Dale Carnegie Hall, where oh, you go. Dale How are you Carnegie doing? Hall. Where are you going? Oh, no. where you, and you call me by my first name. No, no. I did, that was a genuine Neil. That was not right. meant to elicit a sale. But I, I, I don't know if I agree with your approach to narcissist. Meaning, I don't, a failed narcissist, there's nothing worse than a failing narcissist. Okay. Because it's, they're, they're like, they think they're, it's like worse lies than normal. Okay. With a narcissist, it's like, they seem to think the world of themselves. And sometimes the world thinks very highly of them. Right. That's bearable. Yes. It's when someone still thinks very highly of themselves and the world is going like, what? And they're carrying on as if they're still on top. Obviously, I'm sure you meet people who are genuinely go, oh, you 
deserve every right of a narcissist. Like in right. terms of we should award it. Unbelievably talented yeah. and gifted person. Um, and then yet they are not. Like they are thoughtful people. Like perhaps right. Henry Winkler, if you've ever met sure. him. Sure, I haven't, but I hear. I've met him a couple times. I hear mixed things. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I've yeah. heard everyone's like, he's a prince. <laughs> so nice. Very nice, kindly mm-hmm. person. And so, yeah, but he he wouldn't have to be. Like you'd go, oh. He could get away with being a little bit more of a dick. Yeah, he could go, yeah, I'd like to have that kale massaged again. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. It's a little rough on my teeth. I like the idea of him face down on a massage table <laughs> and then a, and then another massage table with kale. <laughs> getting getting massaged oh. as he's getting massaged. Right, but I guess it's I what I when I think of like a guy like Henry Lewinkler, he just seems like preternaturally kind. Yeah. 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 And and you've seen people go from obscure to very famous and it's like I'm not going to say it looks hard, but it like it seems like you can see at like your level of popularity, my level of popularity, you can see how you would lose your mind. Oh, it's awful. And lose perspective. Oh my God. And the stress and the, oh my God. And then all of a sudden, the, these people that you're employing, like you're employing 200, yes. 400 people. Yes. Like that's, that's a lot to... Um, hold lightly. People treat you different. It's just odd. No, I think in the spur uh, spur of the moment, I I don't know how anyone keeps it together. Uh, And I have not experienced anywhere near that kind of uh, success. So I I just don't know how people do it. Yeah. No. And, but, but the, you, you have an eye on your narcissism. Oh, yes. She's a pretty little girl. (laughs) (laughs) My question is though, Let's say you're being narcissistic, right? You're just having one of your narcissist days. Yeah. And um, thinking, oh, look, why can't I get a Tony Choclo lonely bar and eat half of it? <laughs> what if you're fucking funny all day? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like to the, your point about like, if someone's very talented and and like narcissistic, you're like, oh, or you deserve to be narcissistic. It's not good for the person. Like, it's not good for me. Like. I felt like, like I know when I was on a TV show and all of a sudden you're like the Fabergé egg that everyone's yeah. concerned about. Like I call it don't wake the baby. Yeah, don't wake the baby. Like in your case, it truly was. Yeah, no, exactly. Because you had a tent. It's in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so bizarre and um, and it it was very confusing. Like even though... I could see it happening. I know. It's you, hard not to go like, maybe they're maybe right. Maybe I am. A maybe this is yeah. the way I'm supposed to be treated. All the time. And people have been fucking me. I thought they were fucking me. Yeah. The, and my, they were fucking me. Every story I tell is genius. And it's like, what? Yeah. So that I think, yeah. You're I, right. I, I'm contradicting myself, but I was telling somebody today, I was like, it's, good to be a stranger to people. That's a natural human. I I have to come up to people who do not know me and present myself in a certain way and treat them a certain way to get, to make a human connection, to do an exchange, whatever. If everywhere you go, people know you, that's insane it's crazy making yeah you will go insane and they're excited to see you yeah and, yeah and and they usually need something they need a picture they need yeah. to tell you a story they need you to focus why they're telling you that important yep. story well there i was telling somebody it's like just customer service <laughs> yeah are you like what do you need you need a picture, you want yeah, a picture? Yeah, okay yeah. come on no no yeah. we're gonna da, 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 yeah, like just yeah ah, yeah like, let me how do i neutralize this yes <laughs> I'm begging you. Help you. (laughs) Yeah. Um, uh, So you're right. I don't, how does your narcissism manifest itself? I park illegally uh, and assume that it's okay because I can afford the tickets and I go, I think that's pretty shitty. You know, you go, to you the know public at large. if everyone does this, society totally that's breaks right. down. That's right. It breaks down. But, but uh, I, I have go, news for you. Everyone does do it and society is breaking down. We'll be right back. <laughs> um, no, but for real, like I think that's definitely a thing. Um, I definitely. Oh, 
this is a weird thing that's super gross. As a headliner now that I headline, I'll get anxious if the middle's going long. I'll get weird. And I'm like, who gives a shit, Maria? Like, but I'll go, there are 26 minutes now. How will I be able to follow that? Or, yes, yeah, so that's, I'm like, that's really embarrassing. I'm I like, oh my God, am the same way. Uh, to me, that's my uh, fixation with rules. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, I think like, it's, about- it's like, no, we agreed that you would do a thing. I like the show a certain length and you've been br- brought here to do the job. And I feel like you're doing it intentionally. Everyone's doing everything intentionally to me. They're not <laughs> behaving of, of like having a subjective experience. It's all aimed at me and you have the balls to come here and say that I'm a narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. I, I just, I think that's because I, it's all about fear. Cause I, I remember, yeah, when I, when I was first having, I could, I would never even paid attention. I'd just be like, Oh my God, some you know, and then it's just now as I get older, because I've gone through the process so many times now I'm like, I somehow have this belief, like, I only do well if the audience isn't too tired, which there is some truth to that. Like, I'm wordy and, you know, whatever, tiresome. I'm a tire, I'm a tiresome comedian. <laughs> Don't come to me for a good time. And, uh, yeah, so if, you know, sometimes I won't do well if some if a crowd pleaser goes up in front of me. You yeah. Know, somebody who's like awesome, extroverted, yeah. you know, gets everybody agreeing on one concept. Yeah, I'm going to probably tank. But but yeah. But so- I don't think that, I think that's a fair self-protection mechanism. Yeah. Uh-huh. I also think it's like, who booked this yeah. fucking hack to minister you? <laughs> no. No, I'm no. saying what the person you described, I don't like. Well, I don't, no, I think s- some people are great comedians. It's just like, it's not a, a different great style. Match. A different style. Yeah. A different style where you're just like, Oh, it would have been better if I went up first and then that person went up and got it or, or not hired me at all. Like, that's the main thing. I always just want to tell people, like, I don't do nonprofit gigs anymore because I like, there's one fan who's hired me, the people in Napa Valley drinking wine. Do not have any relationship or care for you at all. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah. (laughs) Totally agree. Where they go, we're passionate about you at our network or whatever. I go, who? Yeah. <laughs> is it? Who's passionate? Do, you, do I mean to make a phone call? Yeah. That like, do, is it, is your boss passionate? Cause I'm not an easy sell. <laughs> You're not going to be able to, it's not going to be a quick sell through. <laughs> so like, so let's not waste our time. I got clapped off stage when I was opening for a uh, Howie Mandel for a schizophrenia research. <laughs> I was like, right on. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I see you Fair. ladies. <laughs> yep. I deserve this or whatever. Like it's the, uh, it's a joke I've never been able to do, but you know, when you don't remember, but going on app dates mm. where you on like on the, on aircraft carriers, planes, like top gun, mm-hmm. they land and they get like clipped on a hook. That's how right. they stop so yes. quickly. Yes. And if they don't clip the hook, they just have to take back off immediately. Okay. We should be able to do that in the first 10 seconds of dates we just go like, nope. And just keep, but the audience is like, that's, that's about as good an outcome as possible. Like, yeah, not, this isn't working. We can't no more. Nope. Yeah. Get Howie out here. Yeah. It's just more yeah, our speed. Yeah. yeah. No, that's the thing. The audience isn't wrong. Like I feel, and I feel for them, but I've also been contracted. That's where, that's where um, the beer cans start being thrown. Sure. There's a real misunderstanding. Yeah. But it was one person who's, and then they go, I thought you did great. And you're like, you did? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I even got that after I was like, uh, anyways, it's all right. Um, it's at Black right. Shows, they go, man, you did your thing. <laughs> if you bomb, <laughs> you did your thing. You did your thing. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Number five, heckling. You don't like heckling, huh? Well, I now I see it on the Instagram, and it seems like all the kids are loving. I it. know, and I go, but okay. I know I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to welcome that. Yeah. I wouldn't want to post clips of that because, like, I don't want to have to do crowd work. Yeah, I like it if it becomes like interesting. Like, 
I was at the Ice House in Pasadena. You might want to check out the Ice House. Sure. It's a whole new redo. It's owned by the people who own the Lakers. So there's a lot of sports memorabilia, and it's a really great club. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways, it's very fancy. And uh, I was being heckled there the other night. And, um, you know. Like positively or oh, no. ask a the, question? It was like- an old dude saying, suggesting that I was a rug muncher or like an old timey gay uh, slur. Yeah. I was like, wow, that's, that's old school. And um, so now instead of, ha- sometimes I would have things to say. And now I just try to like be curious, like, how did you get here tonight? Like what, what series of events? Got also, you to what this world do you live in where rug muncher yeah. is like, Anything, <laughs> let alone a thing you would yell unsolicited <laughs> in a public space. Where and where surrounded I was, by memorabilia, yeah, <laughs> no less. <laughs> in yeah, in the uh, yeah, in the uh, well, heart of, heart of uh, Glendale, heart of heart of uh, Pasadena. Pasadena, sorry guys. Well, and yeah, and and I was doing well, so it was an interesting choice. And he had a buddy with him. Anyways, I ended up getting him kicked out, but then the buddy stayed. And, uh, yeah. Anyways, I, I, I get fascinated of like, oh, I want to somehow, and, but I think it's like trauma where you live, relive trauma and you go, oh, I want it this time. I want it to go better. Like I uh-huh. want it to be healed. Yeah. Like Scott and I, we have places where our trauma kind of matches where it's like, like his anger, you know, when he gets angry, I like I can't handle it when somebody gets angry at me, you know, like I just completely shut down. And- I too am from Philly. Really? Yeah. Oh, and have okay. a bad temper. Okay. There you go. So, so, so he. I'm on Scott's side. Whatever you say, no, I'm on Scott's well, side. Well, you're not wrong. I mean, yeah. Um, I'm all like, uh, yeah, why can't I just go fuck a cookie? <laughs> um, all right. I don't know. Is that what people in Philly? Yeah. yeah it's a Philly uh, thing. <laughs> Italians, I don't know, hoagies. Yeah, um, fuck, fuck, <laughs> cookie fuckers. <laughs> cookie fuckers. A peak free. Someone yelled cookie fucker at the at me <laughs> the other night. Um, Jerry Seinfeld treats it like a a uh, customer service issue. Okay. He goes like, sir, you seem unhappy with the show. What can I do? Oh, that's... And he did it one night at the Strip in 1978, and he just kept... It's a great approach. Wow. Like, sir... What's your name? Okay. Gary, what? You seem to be unhappy. (laughs) I'm assuming it kills. No. And it's like effective. And even if it doesn't, it's real. Like it's like saying, hey, I see you. I see that you're uncomfortable, uh, that you've started talking or not paying attention. Um, Yeah. So something's going wrong. We're not connecting or I'm, I'm not doing my job in your opinion. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And I that's what I would like. I would like to have a real interaction with someone, even if it's shitty, you know, like I'd just ha- rather have. What are you, what's, what are you doing? What do you, what's happening? Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, there's a, uh, I was in. Most of the time they're just so drunk though. Th- well, that's the, the issue. thing is people can start crying and, but th- that's, I do kind of want to give people, um, be kind. Like sometimes you know, you're called in off the street with all your girlfriends. Yeah. You've already had six drinks. They're like, come in and see a comedy show. Oh my God. She's really funny. We should all go see. They've all sit down. They've all, and then five of them are like, this fucking sucks. And they can't leave cause, until their bills yeah. paid. So it's like, I'm so sorry this has happened. You know, how can we, you know, you be quieter uh, so that I can go on with my nonsense, you know, and and yeah, and and also uh, I'll bring cash on stage sometimes, like to go. I'll pay you to leave. I've done that. Yeah, because sometimes comedy has poor ad- the advertising is false advertising. Yeah, it's like it's not going to be for everybody. I feel know? like that would work for. I it seems smug when I did it. <laughs> But that's you. That's your on stage no, no, persona. No. Like, <laughs> that's who you are that's, that's in your my, core. No, but the yeah. guy was mad. I was like, "Hey, I'll pay. I'll pay you. Yeah. What'd you pay? Here, you, you go. It's okay. Uh, yeah, like it's okay. It's oh, maybe it didn't seem. I don't, it was ten years ago, but it was well, it was fun. It doesn't. 
matter. You know, like, I, I think that's what people, or at least what I want in a show is something real. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be like, fuck you, you idiot. Yeah. Stupid, nice shirt. Shut the fuck up. Cocksucker. Stupid cunt. You know, like, I, I would rather have like, yeah, who are you? What's your yeah. name? What's going on tonight? Yeah, but I also still get scared. Like my legs start shaking, and it's um, unsettling. And it's not what I what I moved to LA for. Right, right. Yeah, no, I I love that about LA that there is no. That's why I didn't move to New York. Yeah, because I was like, I LA is going to be like people being irrationally positive about yeah, everything going all the time. On. You're a genius. You're amazing. <laughs> Anyways, I'll yeah. never see you again. Yeah, Bye. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> You do you. I've never heard of you and I don't, I'm not going to Google you, but I know that you're a genius and you're amazing. Um, what is the the thing I want to wrap it up with is yes. how, what have you done that's been helpful? Oh, uh, definitely all, all those 12 step groups that I totally shit on. Um, I I love them. I go to them, I would say probably one, one every other day because uh, they are free and uh yeah, I'm going to go to one tonight, Pasadena, 7.30. Um, I don't know why I'm saying it in that way. Um, and Because it's at the Ice House. Because it's at the Ice House. <laughs> um, uh, and what else do I do? Were you always sort of character like this? Meaning like when you were a kid, were you yeah, doing it like? I, I definitely got attention by doing different voices okay. and stuff like that. Yeah, I I was shy and my sister is more the funny one in our family. She is hilarious. You, yeah. you should have my sister on. Not very going good. to. And um, not doing that. <laughs> she is very funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I would I would do anything to try to get some attention. Got it. Yeah, so Okay. So the cults have helped. Cults, uh, meds. Oh my God. Meds. Yeah. yeah. Meds. Medicine is the best medicine. Uh, it really is. I do not. It has changed my life completely. I don't. I all stars. Give me your all star meds. Uh, Seroquel, antipsychotic. Take it to go to sleep at night. Hundred milligrams. Thank you. A thousand milligrams of Depakote. That's a mood stabilizer as well as a thing they use for seizures. But uh, it's awesome. And then uh, forty milligrams of Pro Prozac to top it off. <laughs> you sprinkle it. Oh yeah. You have a you have that like a pepper a Prozac grinder? Yeah. I also have a nitro cold brew at the beginning of every day, which really shoots me into the ninth dimension. <laughs> sure. Um, so that's helpful. And 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 friendships friendships and yeah, try, trying to focus more on relationships, hanging out with people. Yeah. Like that that that's the thing anyone remembers about their lives. Nobody fucking remembers anything about their jobs. Yeah. Everyone only remembers my friends when we did this and when somebody said they love me. And Do you think you'll remember our job? I think I'll remember huge uh, episodes from my job. I will remember some some things, but... but, I but I'm, not, I'm not talking about like the paperwork. I'm talking <laughs> no, no. about... Um, I, yeah, I think the... The feeling useful part, like when I've done a job, like I'll feel like, or somebody says, oh, that really helped me. Or the friends that you're working with. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I mean. Yes. Yeah. I totally, I totally remember that. I'm, um, so relationships and then doggies, got two doggies and my husband who is a delight and he's super funny. Yeah. He's a very funny person. Um, All right. Here's the final question that I, it's feels pretentious for some reason. No, usually it's fun. <laughs> I don't know what you did to me. I know exactly. Um, I don't know why you ruined this question. Move biopic Maria Bamford biopic. Okay. Who plays you? <laughs> What's the arc? Oh my god! Um, I want Tim and Eric. Okay. Uh, to play. <laughs> Great. I play. Just give two more white men jobs, and um, then uh, yeah, what the arc is? Well. The arc is, um, yeah, that it's weird how long I live. Like for <laughs> someone who thought so much about suicide, it's like she just keeps living. She keeps like, not killing herself. Like, or like you get into your 90s and you're like, fucking hell. Like, my mom told me she was ready 20 years ago. Right. Yeah. And it, yeah. But we have this thing where we have to keep living. Have to keep living. So that, it would be a very slow French film, but with 
Tim and Eric. She's still alive. <laughs> just different. It would just be, it could just be a sequence where you just go like 10 years old. I'm going to kill myself and then mm-hmm. dissolve to 20. And mm-hmm. you're like, what? she's still here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to kill myself. Another fucking dissolve to 30. She's still around. How is she and Tim and then Eric and then Tim and then Eric? <laughs> For some reason, I want Run the Jewels, the band. Oh. Uh, Mike and LP to play you. Uh, they remind me of Tim and Eric for some okay, reason. Okay, great. Uh, I want to get Thundercat in there as a musician in that uh, Tim and Eric world. My Did husband. you, what do you think? But all right, so the nihilism and the atheism, do you think that life is meaningful? I think what you put on to it, you know, that if you create the the meaning, also if you have the right brain, like to create meaning in your life, then that's an end. Do you think you have the right brain? Now I do. Oh my God. Yeah. If I have, if I have enough uh, caffeine and all the meds, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Or, uh, yeah, I'm pretty psyched, you know? <laughs> You're so fucking funny. <laughs> You're so <laughs> cool and so funny. Oh my funny. gosh. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. Maria Bamford, everybody. Thanks. Someone said so fun. <laughs> Everybody wants to have, everybody wants to have.